So in this video, I want to introduce the idea of a basis. In the previous several videos, we've discussed subspaces. Uh, we went over the definition of a subspace, uh, how to tell if something is a subspace, and we also answered a couple other questions that deal with subspaces. But now what I want to get into is the actual bones of a subspace, and that's the basis. So we can define a basis as a set of linearly independent vectors that span a subspace or a space in general. So if we take any set of linearly independent vectors that span a space that we're interested in, then we can use that, that set of vectors as a basis for that subspace. So basically what this means is that since these vectors are linearly independent, we can write every vector in the space in terms of the vectors that form the basis. So every single vector in a space or a subspace can be expressed in linear combinations of the basis vectors. And that's why I refer to a basis as the bones of a subspace. And a couple of other things that I want to point out is that this basis, the set of vectors that form a basis, is not too large, meaning that it does not contain linearly dependent vectors. And it's also not too small. And what I mean by that is that there are enough vectors that allow the set to span the entire space that we are interested in. So it spans, we need to make sure that it spans the entire space. If we have a set of vectors that are linearly independent but do not span the entire space, then it's not a basis for that, that space. So let's consider a space that we will call uh, W. If I take any vector in W, and I also have a basis for W, which is equal to the set containing B1, B2, and B3, then what this means is that any vector in our subspace W can be written in terms of linear combinations of our basis, like this. So let's take a look at a quick example. Let's consider the xy plane, or let's consider the vector space R2. If we want to find a basis for this space R2, then all we need to do is pick a set of linearly independent vectors that span this entire space. And if you guys watch my video on linear independence, then you know that the maximum number of linearly independent vectors that you could have in Rn is n. So that means that we can pick any two vectors that are linearly independent, and it will span R2. So I can pick these vectors. We'll call this V1, and we'll call this V2. And these, and these point along the Y and the X axis. And we know that these are linearly independent because they are not on the same line, and we cannot express one of these vectors in terms of the other via linear combinations. And since we have two of these vectors, and we are operating in R2, we know that we also know that this set of vectors, v1 and v2, spans r2. Therefore, I can say that a basis for r2 can be the set of v1 and v2. So as I explained on the previous page, that means that any other vector that exists in r2 can be expressed in terms of linear combinations of our basis, v1 and v2. So let's demonstrate that real quick. I just drew three random vectors, but I can create these three random vectors that I have in green through linear combinations of V1 and V2. For example, I can scale V2 up to this point, and then I can scale, then I can add V1 scaled up to this point, and what I have is this vector. And similarly, I can do the same thing over here. I can come along V2 in this direction and up V2 in this direction, and what I have is this vector. Or I can come along all the way over here in V2 direction and then down in the v1 direction, 
and then I have this vector. So you can see that any point in R2 can be reached via linear combinations of V1 and V2. But this isn't the only basis for R2. As I said on the previous page, a basis can be any set of linearly independent vectors that span the space. For example, I can take this vector and this vector to be my new basis, B1 and B2. And the reason why I can, I can choose uh, these two vectors in blue as my basis is because they are both linearly independent and I have two of them, so I know that it spans R2, so it satisfies the two criteria that is required for a basis. Now what if I add in this vector right here? Can the set B1, B2, and B3 be a basis? Well, B1 and B2 span R2, and if we add in B3, well, the span of all three of these vectors is still R2, but B3 is linearly dependent with B1 and B2 because we know that B1 and B2 already span R2 by itself. So this would not be a basis for R2. So what if we are operating in R3 and we want to find a basis for R3? Well, all I have to do is find three linearly independent vectors and that will create a basis for R3. For example, I can choose this vector, I can choose this vector, and I can choose this vector. B1, B2, and B3. And the set B1, B2, and B3 form a basis for R3 because first of all, these are all linearly independent. And second of all, since there are three of these and they are linearly independent, then they span the entire space of R3. So the set B1, B2, and B3 form a basis. And just to reiterate some points, what if I consider the set B1 and B2 only? Is this a basis for R3? Well, these are both linearly independent, but they do not span the entire space of R3. If we look at this, so B1 and B2 exist in the xy plane, right? So the span of B1 and B2 only reach the xy plane. And there's no way to reach the vectors or points that exist up and down the z-axis. We can say that this set is too small because it does not span R3. So this is not a basis. So I'd like to end this video by revisiting a previous example that we talked about when we were talking about subspaces. And that was, I defined a subspace W and I said that it was equal to the set that contains all the vectors of this form. for all A and B and the real numbers. So now that we know a little bit about bases, let's find a basis for this subspace W. So let's go over the criteria that needs to be satisfied. So first of all, it must span all of W. And in order for it, this to span all of W, what is required is that all the vectors of this form have to be in w. So we know that our basis must include all of the vectors of the form a plus 2b, a minus b, and 3b. And the second criteria is that our basis vectors must be linearly independent. So the way I'm going to find a basis for this is I'm going to rewrite this vector form by splitting up a and b. So I can say that a plus 2b and a minus b and 3b, I can split this up and say that this is equal to a, a, and 0 plus 2b, negative b, and 3b. And then I can factor out the a's and b's, and I can rewrite this as a times 1, 1, 0 plus b times 2, negative 1, and 3. So let's take a step back for a second and let's look at what this actually means right here. So what this is saying is that this form can be expressed in terms of linear combinations of these two vectors. We can also see that these two vectors are linearly independent and because all of the vectors in W can be expressed in terms of these vectors, we know that these two vectors span all of W. So that means that these two vectors these represent the basis for our subspace W. So I can call this guy B1, and I can call this guy B2, 
So the basis for W is the set B1 and B2, which are the vectors 1, 1, 0 and 2, negative 1, 3. Now just to give you guys a little glimpse of what's to come in the future, we can apply the same logic to functions. It, we don't ha we're not just limited to, um, to vectors when we're talking about basis. We can apply the ideas of a basis to functions. So let's consider the function space P2. And what P2 is, this is the set of all polynomials of the form AX squared plus BX plus C all second degree polynomials. So what this means is that any polynomial that can be expressed in combinations of x squared and x and one is part of P2. So I can say that a basis for P2 can be the set of functions x squared, x and one. And this is a basis for P2 because everything in this set can be written in terms of linear combinations of our basis functions x squared x and 1. So anyway I just wanted to introduce the idea of the basis because we're going to start looking at bases for subspaces like column space, uh, row space, and null space. So stay tuned and I will see you guys in the next video.